First, in Romans chapter 13, verse 11, the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit to the Roman church, says, and do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. I believe that when we see these things begin to come to pass, this departure from the Christian faith, that it is a sign that we are living in the last moments of world history as we know it, and the next event on God's prophetic clock is the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians 5, again to the Ephesus church, uh, verses 15 and 16 said, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. What can we do about this? We can wake up. We can stress the urgency to those whom God has brought into our lives, those co-workers, those neighbors, those family members, those friends. See, I think they're looking for answers. And we have that answer, don't we? And we can give to every man that answer of that hope that lies within us. People want to know, is your Christianity real? I wonder if the reason why there is a departure from Christianity is because they don't see it working in our lives. They don't see or find answers from us because we don't know, and as we'll be talking about as we get into the study in Acts today, we don't know why we believe what we believe. It's important, yes, that we know what we believe, but we need to know why we believe what we believe. There is something so powerful, church, about turning to, in the Bible, in our Bible, a verse of Scripture and sharing it with somebody in the hopes that you're giving to them that answer that they need. It's time to wake up. It's time to be wise. It's time to make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil and it's waxing worse. Another shooting in Illinois just this last week. It's going to get worse. This is what we're told. 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, the Apostle John says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But... We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. You know, one of the reasons why I believe it is the Lord impressed upon my heart over a year ago to start doing prophecy updates every Sunday morning before our regular study in his word was because it has a purifying effect on us. The one who has this hope of his soon appearing will purify himself. There's something about Bible prophecy that it has a profound impact on how we live our lives. See, when we see how close we are, it has a way of sort of causing us to do any unfinished business with God that we might have. Why? Because he could come at any time. His return is imminent. There is nothing that has yet to happen before the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Now, I realize when I say that, there are those who would say, well, everybody thought it was going to be in their lifetime. Yes, and that's by God's design. Why? So that we would always be ready, always be watching, so that his return does not come as a thief in the night. Jesus said, I'm going to come in an hour that you do not expect it. That means that we won't be expecting his coming. Yeah, we know it's close, but it will come so quickly. You know, in the twinkling of an eye is not a blink of an eye. It is almost immeasurable in terms of time. The Lord could come back at any time. Now, what should we do? Run up our credit cards and go wait for the Lord to return? No, don't do that. We need to occupy till he comes. My prayer is 
that we as a church would be purified as the bride and be as ready for his return for us as his bride as if it were to take place today as we would be if it's not for another 10 years from now. I'm still making long-range plans. You know, my uh, boys are nine and seven, and I'm begging God to come back before they hit those teen years, but if he doesn't, I've got plans in case he doesn't. And, but I hold on loosely to those plans because I don't know. I want to be as ready for his return as if it's now or if it's not another 10 years from now. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, the Apostle Paul again to Timothy says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, you ready for this, but also to all, that would be you, who have longed for his appearing. So what does this do to us? It purifies us, and it creates a longing in us. First, it should wake us up. That's what it should do to us. It should create an urgency so that we're ready so that his return does not catch us off guard. But not only should it do that to us, this is also what it does for us is that it has that purifying effect and that longing effect. One last thing and we'll get into our study in the book of Acts. I think about what Jesus said in Matthew 6, that we should lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy, where thief cannot break in and steal. If we lay up for ourselves treasures on earth, moth and rust can destroy it, thief can break in and steal it. What's Jesus saying? He's saying that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. See, if you're laying up treasure up there, then your heart will be there too. You know how we say, Home is where the heart is. See, this isn't our home. We're just passing through. And I wonder sometimes, and I've asked the Lord about this, is there going to be another September 11th, maybe another wake-up call before the rapture? I hope so, because there's so many people, I think, in this final gathering that God wants to draw unto himself to make the completeness of the, the, the fullness of the Gentiles so that when that last Gentile gets saved, then the trumpet can sound and we who are alive will rise, not before those who are dead in Christ in that bodily resurrection. But I just wonder, is God going to send one more wake-up call so that even now we can begin to lay up treasures in heaven? not hold on too tightly to that which we have here on earth. Why? Because it's soon passing away. And if our treasure's down here, then our heart is here. If our treasure's up there, then our heart is up there. I wonder if God isn't loosening our grip on this world and the things of this world so he can ready us as his bride, as his church for his return. I mentioned last week that I've been praying about doing a prophecy update on this whole thing about global warming. And Lord willing, next week we'll be able to do this. I'm going to spend some time this week doing some research on this very heated, (laughs) no pun intended, this very heated debate over global warming. Uh, I wonder from a biblical perspective if it's a global warming or a global warning, or both. You know, we call them natural disasters, but I wonder if there's not a supernatural hand in those natural disasters. Anyway, Lord willing, next week we'll... I, I, don't, I didn't realize what I got myself into. I already started this last week kind of preparing for this. Oh my goodness, it is, there's so much stuff out there. It is really interesting to me. It's fascinating to me. I had to actually cut myself off, you know, because I started getting into it. And then I really started getting into it. Then I started getting really angry. I realized that was the time I needed to kind of walk away from it and, 
and maybe just go to the Lord about it. So anyway, Lord willing, next week we can take a look at that.